a student in the AP Bio course presented by College Board. And today I wanted to share what I think is one of the most important topics that we can learn and that everyone outside of the course can appreciate, which is population and especially population ecology. So let me tell you a little bit why this is so important to study. While population ecology is substantial and critical to understand, so we know if the human population and if other species that help us survive and thrive as a humanity, if they're going extinct, if, if at what rate their population is growing and why. So today, uh, we're gonna go through all the things that entail population and, and how do we understand this so we can take it to our advantage. So what are populations? Well, a population is a group of individuals of the same species living in an area. So for example, this turtle here, if we have many of them, then living in the same area, we will be looking at the population of turtles. Then the problem is, how do we know the population and, and the amount of turtles living in the same area? How do we calculate that? And the same thing with humans. Well, then is when we start looking at the density of the populations. The density is the number of individuals per unit area. And this can be determined by actually counting, for example, turtles, counting every single turtle in the area which is rarely done because honestly that would take too long. And if we're looking into more populous um, species like humans, this would take a long time and it would be basically impossible to try to count every single human being in the earth. So what do we do? We do sampling techniques. We count small areas, average the areas, and then use the averages to st estimate the population sizes. That's why statistics and estimations are so important when we're doing um, population counting. We have the estimation so we can know the average amount of turtles in the sea or the average amount of human beings in the earth. But then we also need to look at the dispersion patterns in populations. And a dispersion is basically the pattern of spacing among individuals within a population. For example, we could have a clump dispersion, which I'm going to put here. And a clump dispersion is when individuals gather in patches. Then we have a uniform dispersion which is when evenly spaced individuals um, settle like that in a population. And this could be due to territoriality. So for example, if we have a species that is very territorial and they really want to take care of their own or of their own land or their resources, we're going to have them spaced out so they don't clash with each other. And then we have random. This is unpredictable spacing and it's usually not common. Because up to this point, we were looking at population in a very static form but we have to remember that population itself is affected by births and deaths also by immigration and emigration and that's when we get demography and demography is the study of the vital statistics of populations and how they change over time we cannot just look at population and the dispersion and the density without taking into consideration that people will die and animals will die and people will be born and animals will be born and they will move places looking for better opportunities or just simply to survive. So that's when we start looking at the different parts of demography. We have this thing called the life table, which is an age specific summary of the survival pattern of the population. And this is represented by nothing else than the survivorship curve. Curves. So let's talk about the different types of survivorship curves. For example, we have type 1, which is low death rate during the middle and early stages of life. And then towards the later stages of life, we have the higher death rate. This would be, for example, with humans. We also have type 2 curves. And this is the constant death rate over the lifespan of an organism. This is usually seen in birds. Then we have the type 3 curve, and this is when there's a high death rate early in life, for example with trees or plants when there are seeds, and then there's a lower death rate once they survive that early life stage and they finally become a plant or a tree. So you may be wondering, how do we necessarily know the change in population size? Well, lucky for you, we have a formula. So whenever you want to know the rate of increase per capita, you can use this formula. This. So here we have the change in population size over the change in time equals the birth rate minus the death rate. So we have 
have two growth models. One is the exponential growth and the other one is the logistic growth. So then we have the exponential growth. For example, let's say we're looking at Luna's population. They are living under ideal conditions. They have easy access to food, they have abundant food, they're free to reproduce, etc. So therefore, the population of Luna's species is gonna go up. Then we also have logistic growth. For example, Jackson here says that every day. We have some birds that eat seeds that my mom puts on the tree. But there's too much density of population of birds that exceeds the amount of food that my mom puts out. If this is the only source of food that those birds have, then eventually we're going to see a logistic growth in which they are going to increase until there's no more resources they can use. And that's the bad thing about logistic growth. There's going to be a point where some sort of factor is going to make sure that the population growth starts decreasing. So, population dynamics. Populations are influenced by natural selection and the environmental factors. We have life history, which is the traits that affect an organism's schedule of reproduction and survival. And you have three things that affect this. You have when reproduction begins, how often the, the organism reproduces, and the number of offspring that they produce per episode of reproduction. So when we're talking about population dynamics, we also have to talk about density-dependent regulation. This is as the population increases, factors can slow or stop growth by decreasing the birth rate or increasing the death rate. And this could be competition, predation, toxic wastes, territoriality, disease, intrinsic factors. It's basically what we're seeing right now with COVID-19. As I said before, there is population dynamics. There are density-independent regulation, which are factors that exert their influence on the population size, but the birth and death rate of the population doesn't change. For example, weather, climate, and even natural disasters. Ecology is something that you just learn in your bio class. It's something that you see every single day. So, until then, and goodbye.